all about you, Lord. Not about our faithfulness. Not about our goodness. Not about what we have done. But God, it is about what you have done. Not about our faithfulness. Not about our goodness. But Heavenly Father, it is all about you. It is all about you. It is all about you. You are a wonderful God. We can attest of your faithfulness. We can attest of your goodness. in expectations that God you are going to give us grace as we continue to journey on in this journey of salvation in this journey of faith Lord how we pray as we begin our morning prayers and devotion this morning that you may bless us with your presence that God you may walk with us as we lift our hands in worship, as we lift our hearts to you, as we surrender everything to you, O oh God, how we pray that you are going to meet us at the point of our very need. We want to take this opportunity, Lord, to confess all our sins to you. We are sinners before you. Many are the times that we fall short of your glory. Many are the times, Lord, that we do contrary to your will. But thank you, Heavenly Father, because you have promised us in your word that whenever we confess our sins to you, you are just and faithful to forgive. Forgive us, Lord, any sin that can make us not approach your throne of grace and the sin, Lord, that can make us not to be acceptable before you. Lord, we pray for your cleansing power upon our lives. And we pray, Jehovah God, that you may search our hearts and our minds and remove any kind of doubt so that, Lord, as we lift our hands to you, as we give this sacrifice of worship to you, it will be worthy and acceptable before you. Heavenly Father, as we surrender ourselves to you, how we pray, as we draw ourselves to you, Lord, draw yourself nearer to us. We need you, Lord. We need you. Walk with us. Even those who are following us through Facebook, 
Lord, we pray that this time that you have given us, Lord, to fellowship together, may you walk with us and may you bless us as we continue worshiping you. For this is our humble prayer of faith in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Together, all of us, we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those sins against us. Not lead us into the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's give God a mighty hand clap. Amen. We take this opportunity to welcome you to our morning prayers and devotion. And this one hour of prayers and to hear the word of God, we want to welcome you and to thank God for you for coming because when we see you, we see the intercessors, those who stand on the gap of our nation, on the gap of our church, and it is God who has chosen you to stand in the gap. As we pray, release your heart, release your mind, and tell God to use you, and our God is faithful. As we pray this morning, I want us to pray with a thankful heart. It is now remaining around 15 days to end the year of 2020. And all through this year, all of us, we can attest of the faithfulness of God. In one way or another, God has been faithful to us. Even though we'll not remember the past, what God has done for us, let us remember the present, that you are alive today. In the midst of challenges, in the midst of difficulties, that you can breathe today. That is one of the things that we can give thanks God, we give God thanks for, because it is the wonders of God upon our lives. The Bible says in the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 17 and 18, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And I want us to give thanks to God. If there is an year that the people of God have prayed, it is the year of 2020. I'm convicted that in this year we have really prayed. In this year we have really poured our heart to the Lord. But the Bible remind, reminds us that we continue praying. It is not over. And as we pray, we pray with a thankful heart. But the Bible has reminded us that we give thanks in all circumstances. Let us take this opportunity as we approach the throne of grace. Remember what God has done for you. Remember what God has done for your family. Remember what God has done even for our nation. Remember what God has done. And as you have a heart of remembrance, have a heart of thanking God because it is all about God. Sometimes we give thanks to God even for the things that he has not done because our God is faithful and as we give thanks to him, he will do and he will answer our prayers in accordance to his will. So as we pray, have a thankful heart. It is all about God. It is all about God. From January, February, March, up to the mid of December, it is all about God. Not about our faithfulness, not about our goodness, because many are the times that we see and we fall short of the glory of God. But the faithfulness of God has always been constant in our lives. So we have all the reasons to give thanks and to give praise to the Lord. Ume tu kuka, tu akueshimu, hakuna mwingine kama wewe. 
things that King of all glory may conceal your faithfulness, Father. That even though it was tough, oh God, that even though it was hard, that even though so many enemies were around us, oh God, that even though there was a table before us in the presence of our enemies, oh God, here we are, Jehovah, not by our power, not by our might, but because of your spirit.
heart to the Lord as you give thanks to God. Remember the time that you were sick but God came through for you and he healed you. You were in the hospital bed but the, by the mercies of God God healed you and right now you are not in the hospital bed. Remember that time that you were shedding tears and nobody could come through for you, but God came through for you. He wiped away your tears. Remember that time that you were so down and you were wondering where to go, what to do, but God came through for you. He came and he uplifted you. Remember what God has done to your children. Those who are in class eight, those who are in form four, they are in school, they have been in school interacting with others, but God has protected them from this pandemic. We all have thousand reasons to give thanks to God. Just go before the Lord and tell God, if God, you are not on my side, I could have been defeated. But I want to thank you because you have been on my side. There is a song that we always sing, what a friend we have in Jesus. And for sure, all our sins and griefs he bears for us. When we have trials and temptations, 
God comes through for us. He is a friend who is not like other friends. He is a friend who will never break your heart. He is a friend who will never disappoint you. He is a friend who will always be closer to you than your brother. He is a good friend even in this season because Jesus is the reason for this season. And even though we don't have many things, let us have Jesus. Let us have Jesus. And let us thank God for Jesus because he is the reason for this season. As we conclude this part of giving thanks to the Lord, I want us to rise up and sing this song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. What a Friend We Have in Jesus. What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Father, 
We have gone through trials and temptations, dear Lord, but we have seen your hand stretched and even holding us and even lifting us, dear Father. You have walked with us through all this journey, throughout the year, through the pandemic. You have given us divine cover and protection, dear Lord. You have continued to be our God, our sustainer, and even our provider, dear Father. Many are the people who have lost hope, dear Father. Many are them that have lost their job. Many are them that have lost their businesses and others, even their relatives, dear Father. We pray that you will be a close friend unto them. You will continue to comfort them. Hold them, dear Father. Restore joy and peace in their lives, dear Father. Continue to guide them to the, through the path of righteousness. We want to exalt your name this morning because only you who knows what we are going through. Be with everyone's heart. Read their mind, dear Father, because you know their desires, dear Lord. And let it be unto them, dear Father, as it pleases you. This morning we surrender our nation before thee, the leaders, the president, and all those who work under him before the able hands, dear Lord. We pray, dear Father, that your grace of wisdom shall be sufficient unto them, that they shall continue to lead this nation in accordance to your will. We pray for the body of Christ, dear Father, committing all the leaders of all the churches in the world before thee, dear Father. More so, we remember our Diocese of Mount Kenya South, committing our bishop before you and all the clergy that works under him, dear Father, and all the church workers those who help in every area, dear Father, and even the Christian who are faithfully praying unto you, dear Lord, and uplifting your body. We pray this morning that you will remember them in a mighty way. You will shine your light in their hearts, in their minds, Father. You will visit them in their families and give peace, give joy, provide for their needs, dear Lord. We pray that you will continue to fill our hearts, our minds with your Holy Spirit, that we will walk in accordance to your will, dear Father. This morning we want to thank you because of our business community, dear Father, for our farmers and all the people of this nation. We pray, dear Lord, that you will look at them with compassion, dear Father, especially this festive season. Many are going through tough times, Lord, but you are the restorer of hope, dear Father. We pray that you are going to restore hope where there is none. You are going to bring joy. You are going to help us embrace even the birth of your son Jesus Christ in our hearts, in our families, and in our nation, dear Lord. We seek for divine protection upon them that are going to commute and travel, dear Lord. We cover them, dear Father, by your holy name, that they shall not get any accident, dear Father. The evil one who rises up at this time, dear Lord, we bind him in Jesus' name. We pray for the sick ones, those who are in hospital, admitted, dear Lord, them that are ailing from homes, dear Father, and them that are desperate because they don't know what to do. You are the Lord over all, and we believe, dear Father, that your power are still in action and in work, dear Lord, and you are going to heal them from wherever they are. Them that are cash trapped, dear Father, and they are, don't know what to do so that they can reunite with their families because of the hospital bill, we will provide a way and make it where there seem to be no way. May you continue to give them financial breakthrough, dear Lord, that they may be able to clear their bills and reunite with their family. Them that are believing, dear Father, you are the comforter. And I believe, dear Father, that you are working on their hearts and their minds, and you are going to comfort them at this period. We thank you this morning for the Christians who are here before you, you, dear Lord, to praise and worship you, to bring their prayers and petition and it does it for the sake of others. How I pray that your blessing shall be upon them. You shall continue to meet even with their needs, dear Lord, as you extend their territory. Father, this morning I speak a blessing upon them, dear Father, that wherever they go, they shall be called the blessed of their Lord. Because you will bless their going, their coming back. You will bless the works of their hands. You will bless their families, dear Father. And everything they have hands find to do, dear Lord, it shall prosper. Because you will command your blessing upon them. This morning we are glad, even as we come before thee, to listen from you. May you minister unto our hearts, unto our minds, unto our soul, and transform us. In Jesus' name we do trust and believe. You may have your seats, please. 
Good morning. I'm very delighted to be in your presence. I want to thank God for this opportunity. I want to thank the canon and uh, the clergy because of giving me this opportunity to share the word of the Lord together with you this morning. I don't take it for granted. It's because of God's grace that we are here, uh, especially at this year that people have gone through tough times, but the uh, Lord has continued to be faithful in all situations and circumstances. One thing I thank God for is that when he created mankind, he had a sole purpose to fellowship with him in the Garden of Eden, and all he wanted is just to somebody he can fellowship with. And uh, that is why he said, let us create a man on our image and on our likeness. So that whatever God desires is what we will desire. And the desire of God is that we fellowship with him. But uh, the man ran short of his glory and fell through the temptation from the serpent. And over years, God has tried to reconcile man, but sometimes man could not be reconciled with God. And even God became angry. He finished man through water, through fire. He took them to slavery and see whether the heart of man could change so that he can go back to the beginning where God wanted to fellowship him. And years and centuries went by, and uh, that hope of reconciliation seemed lost because every time man could sin, he could be punished, and uh, he could not change. He will change for a time, then he will go back to his sinful ways. But we thank God because of his wisdom and love for mankind. He never gave up despite the disobedience and the sinful ways of man, God continued to care for him and even seek for the reconciliation. And as we are in this season of Advent, waiting for the birth of Christ, who reconciled us to God and even took away the wrath of God from us because we became our interceder and high priest, it was foretold in the book of Isaiah. 40, because the people of God had suffered so much, sometimes even from the hand of God himself because of the captivity they went through and other hardship they went through. And first, Isaiah 40, from verse 1 to 5 says, Comfort my people, say go, says God, comfort them, encourage the people of Jerusalem, tell them they have suffered long enough and their sin are now forgiven. I have punished them in full, all their sins. A voice crying out, prepare the wilderness, a road for the Lord. Clear the way in the desert for our God. Fill every valley, level every mountain. The hill will become a plain, and the rough country will be made smooth. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and the whole human race see it. The Lord himself has promised. This is when the children of Israel had been punished. They had gone through rough time. And they were very desperate. But they were, a prophet was sent to them. And they, he was told to comfort them and tell them that the Lord has forgiven their sins in full measures. He has punished them enough. He's not going to punish them. He'll make a straight path in the wilderness. Every valley shall be filled every mountain made low. And uh, it's like the same way we are in today. We began a year very well, but from January there, things started turning. It was something that we used to hear, it's in far land. Then on March, it was confirmed to be in our country, this pandemic of COVID-19. And throughout this season, it has been very, very difficult. Many people have lost their jobs. Many people have lost their loved ones. Many people have 
been terminated from or retrenched from their due to work. The families are breaking apart because of desperation. We have had where people are murdering each other. The husband kills the wife, the wife kills the children because of desperation and loss of hope. And when we thought that uh, the statistics were very helpful and it showed that the pandemic was coming almost to an end, even our school-going children, some of them went back. Then the news came back again that uh, it's continuing to increase and the scourge is not yet over. It's the first time even in the history, even during those times of ancient days, the church has never been closed. If anything, when there was issues, the church was the one in forefront fighting and praying, interceding. But this time around, the things were so bad that even the churches were closed down. And now we are back to the situation where it seems that the hope has been lost. And that is why we are being told, comfort my people, say this, the Lord, comfort them. Encourage my people, Jerusalem, tell them they have suffered long enough and their sin are forgiven. I have punished them in full for their sin. We are being told, whatever we have done, whatever we feel that is hindering the move of God in our lives, has been completely forgiven. And we are going to get the salvation of God. As we prepare the coming of Jesus Christ, many other people I talk to, and uh, they tell me they don't even have plans for Christmas because January is coming and they don't even know how their children are going to go back to school. But the Lord tells us that we continue waiting upon him because he is going to do a new thing in our lives. If we read Isaiah 42 and verse 16, it says, I will lead my blind people by the road. They have never traveled. I will turn their darkness into light and make through country smooth before them. Those are my promise and I will keep them without fail. We are being told that the Lord will lead his people and he will turn this darkness that is there into light and he will lead us to a road that we have never traveled before. Sometimes the darkness looks overwhelming, that there is no hope in sight. It's like we have nowhere to turn to. The government is broke and it's thinking of their own. They want their issues to be addressed. Nobody is speaking about the common monainji. They seem to have forgotten that we have a pandemic and right now all they want is the BBI. You look at your neighbor, they are going through the desperate situation that you are in. You look at your employer and things seem to get worse. But the Lord is telling us that through this dark time, he will make a way and he will turn the darkness into light and he will take us through the road we have never traveled. And we, this is high time that we need to trust in God. When he says he will do, he will do. And I believe the word of God doesn't come and return to him void, but it accomplishes its purpose. For them that are going to believe that even during the hardest of time, the Lord is still able, the Lord still have power, he's going to take you through. If you continue to persist in him, he will continue to help you sail through. Israel, the Lord who created you, do not be afraid. I will save you. I have called you by my name. You are mine. When you pass through the deep waters, I will be with you. Your troubles will not overwhelm you. When you pass through fire, it will not burn you. For I am the Lord, the God, the Holy One of Israel who saves you. And we are being told that God knows the circumstances we are going through. And despite the hardship, despite it looking like the fire or going through the river, 
He's told, telling us that he is together with us. This situation will never overwhelm us because he is together in the situation with us. All we need to do is call upon his name. And those who call upon his name are, will be saved. We need this morning to take this opportunity to pray to God. Thank him that he is together with us in the situation he knows us. And uh, Isaiah 40, 31 says, But those who trust in the Lord for help will find their strength renewed. They will rise on with wings like eagle. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and not grow weak. We are being told, but for those who trust in the Lord for help, they will find and renew their strength. This morning, the Lord is asking you just to call upon his name so that he can renew your strength. He can renew your hope. He can be on top of your situation. And in everything that you are going through, despite how hard, how difficult it looks, just believe and trust that the Lord is walking together with you in your situation and he will bring you safely to the end of it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
fulfill in your life, in your family, before the end of this year. I know from the beginning of the year, we had goals, we had objectives, we had the prayer items that we had presented before God. have any just present it before the Lord believing and trusting that our God will hearken to your prayer the Bible says that seek the Lord now you can find him he is together with us to hear your petition he is together with us to wipe away your tears he is together with us to make a way where there seems to be no way. The toy na ribotwa igati gai da te agera do maudi. Ona tugi meno ne ara taito. Ari amatu edete gai gutire hedi ari atumena. Ne todo gai da te agera do maudi. Do kanerore ogo weire. Kana wone tota gihota. Kana wone gaita gutiga neirie. Gaita gutiga neirie. Neri kora go hamwe nawe. Atwara ne hamwe nawe. Na kuhi oho tani. Because our God is faithful. Neto go usho keri agado mono muadani. Todwe do te agirado maudi. Nariria mwada ni tuwa kuhoya, nabu iguwa ga mahoya maitu. Riria tuwa dhegere na gete gea kugea adha na kia utugi, mwada ni netuwa naga uge shokia mahoya maitu. Nyoto ikuru kageri adha shiaku, noga tu ikuru keria utugi waku. Dhege unegu tuhoti dhia guka mahida maya maru ushine, negeda tugea mahida maitu. Magu kuhoya ona gugu daida. Na netuwa gusho keri agado. Netodo toku ma mora goyo mwada ni tuwe na mwe hoko na kire giriro. Ati bara shito shio de mwada ni niogutu roerira. Maho ya maitu mwode gai niogutu igua. Na makiria furorio wito wa Kenya. Ati gai niogutu ehere liya kingo kige eke. Na mauru maria marikuo. Na nigeetha mwadha ni tuone uhono kaniyo waku. Na kanitha waku Jehova gai ni uko uroga mia. Na makiria mwadha ni dao sezi eno iti wa Mount Kenya South. Mkiririka na mwadhi kafu Charles. Mwadha ni umuririka neha mwana family yake. Na reo the matuga tagaruguru wake. Na makiria mwadha ni kanithoyo wa St. James Cathedral. Kuria tuka ga mwadha ni gugudhada yona gukuhoya. Wete kire kuririka na provost Atu gateri na adhuri ya kanitha Na kristiano odhe ya kanithoyo Okuri ya mare muadhani Tuwa mahoera wega waku Na tuwa mahoera kiradhi moge yaku Nari uhore li wagai Uri otagi menye kori otari Uri ikari ya gorosi anyu Ona gwe shiri ya kwa nyuna kuo Negeza mutura mumenye te gai Ona mumwede te Ona muro wake wa mumwe, Jesu Kristo, mwadha ni wito. Nige kira adhi mokia gai. Ithe wito mwene hinya wode. Ona kia mori. Ona kia roho mudheri. Getu wana nage hamwe na ini. Mahida maya maadhi guku. Kira adhi mokia gai. Gekoro wakire igoro rianyu hamwe na family siyanyu. Pumare u ginya tene na tene. Tuasema Asante Tuasema Asante Tuasema Asante Ewe Ewe Mungu Owe Owe Ni Oh uh -huh.
be with you. God bless you so much and thank you for coming and for standing in the gap. On behalf of our provost, I want to thank you and to tell you that God will hearken to all our prayers in accordance to his will. Amen. So go in peace to love and to serve the Lord and may the Lord be with you. May the Lord guide you and may the Lord walk with you. See you on Wednesday as we come to pray and to worship the Lord. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Niguran nama wi komaku Yandere la juga ore mwega Utirega yonge tao